So in this video, we talked about some additional companies that are building tribes. That is, they are generating passionate fans around their brand. And this can be a powerful way for people to connect with each other and to psychologically connect with the brand. Now, one thing we previously talked about is tribes, and this is this innate human tendency to bond together with others over common ideas. And it can be very powerful in terms of making changes in society. Essentially, many of the changes that we see in society happen because a small group of people gets together and clarifies and shapes their ideas, and then they bring more and more people into their group until they become a movement. And there are various features about tribes that we've talked about in a previous video, like that they start to use the same language to talk to each other, and they develop symbols, and they develop rituals. And I'll put a link to that video below. But today I wanna to talk about two tribes that I haven't previously talked about, and they're often not talked about in the context of tribes. So the first is Patagonia. Now, in the book Non-Obvious Megatrends by Rohit Bhargava, he describes 25 years ago when Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, was faced with a problem. He either had to sell this company that he had started that was growing exponentially, or he had to start a foundation for these causes that he was very passionate about. So he was faced with a difficult choice. He was either going to sell the company, Patagonia, or he was going to continue to build his company. And he decided to stick with his company. And Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, quotes in a paper, perhaps the real good that we could do was to use the company as a tool for social change. So he recognized that potentially his goals could be best achieved by maintaining the company. And this is very powerful in the sense that his vision is clearly grounded and very strong from the get-go and he seeks to maintain his vision for his concern for the environment and many people recognize this about patagonia so there are many people out there who are aligned with his vision and they recognize that he shares that same vision with them and so they have this instant connection with the brand and they are receptive to receiving information from the brand for example, through their website, all the information that Patagonia communicates to its customers about the environment, their fans are receptive to that and they're shaped by that. And so they're growing a sort of community that is starting to use the same language and have similar beliefs and values about the environment based on their interactions with each other. And when you set up a strong foundation for your beliefs like that as a company, then you have the ability to engage in behaviors that are aligned with those beliefs that your followers will view as authentic. So if you do something that is different or unexpected, then people might wonder if you did it to try to get attention or if you did it for other alternative reasons. But if it's aligned with the vision of your brand, then it can be okay. And one recent interesting example of that comes from Burger King putting out an advertisement that had a moldy Whopper. And their notion is that we're so passionate about not putting preservatives in our Whopper that it gets moldy and we're proud about that. But in terms of Patagonia, one thing they did is they noticed the Black Friday bandwagon, this notion that everybody was going out to purchase things on Black Friday, and they went in the opposite direction and they put out a big ad that said, don't buy this jacket. And in the advertisement, they talked about the environmental costs of making the jacket. So this does two things. First, it's aligned with the vision of the founder of Patagonia. And second, it differentiates them from any other products. And it's unexpected because it doesn't align with everybody getting on board for Black Friday. The other thing they did that was very interesting was they created a worn wear wagon and went around repairing old Patagonia clothes, old torn up Patagonia clothes. And this is another aspect where, you know, sometimes people say that companies want their products to break so that you have to buy another one. 
But here Patagonia is coming out acknowledging that people have this belief about certain products and saying, no, we actually want you to fix your product because it's better for the environment. And now customers can resell used Patagonia clothes on their website and uh, trade them in for other products. So there's a lot of ways that Patagonia is getting involved in trying to keep people from using and repurposing their clothes and fixing their clothes instead of going out and buying a new piece of clothes that might not be needed. And their passion for the environment goes so far that they're now suing the president because of plans to reduce the size of two national monuments. So if you think about this from the perspective of the founder really wanting to create an environmental impact and using the company to do that, then they actually have the opportunity here and it appears as if they're trying to take advantage of that opportunity here. Now going back to the one of the aspects of Patagonia is how they communicate their beliefs and visions to their customers through their YouTube channel and through videos and social media. And this can be a powerful way to build a fan base around yourself. And so the message here is that some companies, if they can just create a communication platform, a physical space where their potential followers or fans or customers can engage with each other, then that can be a powerful way to get people to connect and engage with your brand or your company. And one example of that, a powerful example, comes from Vanguard with the Boglehead forums. And so Vanguard introduced the idea of index funds and emphasizing low fees in your investments. And they also created this forum and it became a very powerful connecting place for customers of Vanguard where they could talk about these passions for these funds that had low fees and the investing perspectives of John Bogle. So creating a place where people can gather together to discuss ideas around your brand or your product can be very powerful. And one company that did this very successfully is the website Baby Center, which acknowledged that women go through a shift, a psychological shift to being a mother and thinking about what it means to be a mother. And so they needed a place where they could chat with each other and share their stories and get support and sort of understand this new phase of their life. So they created that place where new mothers can talk about their experiences and feel connected with others who are in a similar situation. And that forum got very powerful and people use it as a resource and connect with each other and then they can go throughout the Baby Center website and find resources that are also catered towards the new mother and things that the new mother might need and be interested in. So to learn more about how companies can form tribes around their brand, check out the links below and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to keep updated on our posts here and hit the like if you like this video. And let us know in the comments of what you think of this video or some topics that you'd like us to talk about. Thanks for checking this out.